Hey, folks, just a friendly reminder that all shows on the Madness Comic Network are produced by their individual hosts and in no way reflect the opinions of the network as a whole. Hey, my Dirk Manning here, the writer and creator of numerous comic books and graphic novels, including Nightmare World, Tales of Mystery, Way But Not Dead, uh, all kinds of stuff. And I am super excited for you because you are getting to watch right now, right this moment, out of all the things we're going to be doing, you're getting to enjoy and revel in the Madness Comic Network. And that is awesome. Thank you for being here. and embraced by Hollywood, feared in the underworld. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel was one of the most powerful men in America. He was also one of the most hated. The man who gave birth to Las Vegas was gunned down in the luxurious home of his glamorous lover. Almost 80 years later, his murder remains unsolved. Who killed Bugsy? To me straight, Doctor, I can take it. Take the charge out from under the wheels. Blast up, no offense, Margaret. Contact, we're off. Brum, brum. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of loving you. The doctor, wait a minute. The doctor is in, baby. Hey, happy Resurrection Day. I'm a Christian, so it's, a, it's for me, it's the holiest day of the year. So I just want to give a shout out to everybody. Hope you're having a blessed day. Welcome back, Hugh. It's a pleasure to see you. Well, I mean, he was there for a minute. <laughs> 
Okay, he's back. Hold on. Welcome back, Q. It's a pleasure to see you again, my old friend. If you can't take a little bloody nose, maybe you ought to go back home and crawl under your bed. Hippity hoppity happy Easter. What's, What's up, y'all? What's I'm happening? doing good. All right, we got more. Happening. We got more. We, we, we got more. We got Mr. James Lee, who was the first one here and said, just do it, Pops. We're going to do hey, it. Just one second. I have a dog issue. Oh, he's got a dog issue. So we got also the one, the only Mr. Christian Zappo. What's happening, Christian? What's going on? Happy Easter. What's up, Zaff? What's up, y'all? Doring in the chat, got shadow in the chat. It's already popping off up in here, Doc. All right, there you go. This ain't work today on a holy day. This is just okay. I'm back chilling, chilling and drawing. Yeah, yeah. So, to Doc and everybody else, happy Easter. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I am a Christian also, yeah. and I do. Yes, so thank you, thank you to everybody. That's it's Easter, it is a Christian holiday. And if you don't like it, oh well. <laughs> Hippity hoppity. <laughs> if, you and like, also, if you don't like it, nobody cares. <laughs> and also, uh, since it was Friday and Saturday, I would like to send a wonderful happy birthday shout out to Mark Silvestri, who turned 65. So, happy oh, birthday to Mark Silvestri. Mr. Sinister. 65. Yes, Lord, Lord, Lord. Where does the time go? I know. I was looking at my age, too. I'm going, oh my God, I got old. Oh, don't remind me, please. Pops, Happy birthday to Mr. Sinister. All right. So I got something to show you guys. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. Kind of stream, Pops. I got something to show you guys real quick. Well, you know it's on camera, right? Okay. Yep. It's got to be on camera. All right. Um, just, just making sure you know. Keep it in your pants. So <laughs> some of you may know a little something about... Um, mom my mom is 85 years old happy your birthday mom's mom. your mom's 85 birthday. years old birthday. she's 85 years old not today she's gonna be 86 here in a couple months but look oh. at look what she's doing doc I, I can't see what she's doing what is she doing she's working out dude oh Seriously. come on with it come on with it 85 years old just beat cancer and she sends me a picture of herself working out, telling me, to get yeah, up. yeah, to work out. Up, you know, um, that's interesting. No that's it's interesting, quick. Doc, because this year my dad would be eighty-five. Yeah, it's it's amazing, dude. There ain't no quitting that woman at all, none. And I guess that's where I get my my drive from. Tenacity. No, it's it's not her birthday yet. I'm just saying that's how old she is, bro. <laughs> Tenacity, that's the word you're looking for. She dude, she energize her bunny. Come on. She she's 85. She just had um she just beat some kind of throat type cancer and she's right back to singing in the choir, right back to you know what I mean? And just no quitting the woman. None. Right on. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's, that's got to be where I get my uh, determination to continue on from. Uh, because as I said yesterday, publicly, uh, my failures and, and setbacks, they paved the road behind me. Always move forward, people. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. 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 Is that right? Because you know, this last last weekend where I was when you guys were doing this show was a little bit of an eye opener. A little bit, you know. I'm laying in the hospital bed watching you guys do the show, and. Uh, 
doctors and nurses are walking in and you know i'm telling them what i do you know i run this network and these guys are all out here kicking ass and i'm stuck in this stupid bed you know um but it was you know it gave me a little bit of time to reflect man and uh i don't know cracking jokes out here at the expense of others for clicks and stuff just doesn't seem to mean anything anymore. Right. It, do, it don't mean nothing anymore. I want to help people succeed. Mm -hmm. Can't help them succeed by doing that kind of shit. You know? I mean, unless I'm cracking on Zaf, then it's okay. That's right. That's right. Uh, Feel free. Feel free. <laughs> I'm like no. public domain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And, and, and pops, I didn't want to say anything, but uh, your mom looks like she got you beat by like ten years. She look, she looked younger than you. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad she's still around to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. She out there working out. Yeah. Shit. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. When they sent me that message a couple years ago, she's going in the hospital. She's got to have surgery. She got cancer. You know, at that age, you just kind of go, "Hey, eh, well, yeah. time's coming, right?" You're trying to just prepare yourself. And then what she do? She kicks cancer's ass, comes back, starts fucking with you because you're fucked up. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sending me get well cards and shit. You know? <laughs> I love you, you, mom. you never know. You never know what the day holds. You know what I'm saying? It's beast mode, yeah. mom. Beast mode. Yeah. Well, the funny thing, Doc, look, she was a Marine. Ah, ah. that explains everything. She was a Marine. She was a cop. <laughs> a Marine, a cop. She worked world. for cops. She was one of them people, one of them ideologists that thought she could go work for Child Protective and change things. You know? I mean, she, Mom's a hero. She's one of them people that really does stuff for the right reasons. Right on. And now she's old, she's retired, but you can't tell because ain't no stopping that lady. I heard that, man. Uh-oh. What do we got? Is that Domino? What do we got going on here? Yep. Domino. Oh. They deliver. <laughs> What's up, Gray Wolf? What's happening? Good Gray Wolf in the house. Good to see you, buddy. All right, Twitter's starting to pop off over there. It's starting to pop off. That's what usually happens, man. We get a show going, and after about 10 minutes, you look up, and all of a sudden, we got 20, 30, 40 people watching on Twitter, and it just keeps going up as the show goes on. A couple weeks now, Twitter's been pretty live. And kick it. Somebody say something. I'm sorry, I'm concentrating. What are you drawing, Christian? And more importantly, who's running the vibrator? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Um, so with the last campaign, and what I'm going to do with each campaign moving forward is do uh, like character bio cards. Um, you know, so, sort of reminiscent of what Marvel and DC used to do with their who's who books. Right, but I, I I make them like uh like tablet cards laminated. Um, so I'm working on 
a couple of characters that are going to be included in this next campaign. So this is uh, one of the main characters that you're going to see in the new book get introduced. And this is just going to be the, the image that's going on to the, uh, the bio card. Nice. And these, these guys here are kind of like uh, my other main characters cohorts. Right. And so they're going to be on uh, collectively on a card together as well. So these will be in the next campaign. Once it uh, gets launched, you'll be able to see these. Hi, James, what do you got going on? I am drawing the Goblin Queen for as in honor of Mr. Mark Silvestri. Since it is his birthday. I'm working on that right now. And she's also one of my favorite characters that he ever designed. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, they did go like eight issues of her story arc, which was fantastic. Inferno, right? Yes, sir. I think I have that novel. Hold on. Well, I have the I, I have actual book, the actual comics, and I got Mr. Chris Claremont to sign them all too. Sweet. Yep. And I have a couple, and I have a couple that Mark signed too. But I have a lot of books Mark signed. I even have his uh, King Conan books that he drew. If you did not know that he did those. Nice. Before he did X Men, yeah, seems like I remember that. Those are some good. Those are some really good books, and I've also got his very first book called um, that he did with Marvel. Um, can't remember the title of it, but it's a it's a graphic novel, and it is the first appearance of Apocalypse. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Nineteen eighty six. Page. Well, congratulations, Gray Wolf. You get to be a grandpappy. Grandpappy. Oh, cool. I got two of them grandsons and two of them granddaughters. It's always fun. fun, fun, fun. Always fun, 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 fun. Can you show us, Doc? Or are we just going to look at the top of your head? What do we get? <laughs> Give me just a minute to get to a stopping point, buddy. And I'll switch, right, my, right, I'll switch right. over here. Um, I got a couple of, you know, small announce type mints. Um, if you don't know, we have a GoFundMe going on right now to lay the foundation for the business aspect of the Madness Entertainment Group, the LLC, stuff like that. Um, I don't have money for it, guys need help uh, plain and simple if you want to see your friends people like this up on roku here in the near future just throw fiber at me man um look anybody that we've helped over the last five years sell books i'd appreciate it if you throw a little something back at us that's all you know um, I've, I've been working i've been trying my best to get you guys seen and help you sell books help me take it to the next level that's all. Um, that's a whole untapped, a whole untapped audience over there on Roku, guys. We can get you seen in front of a whole new crowd of people, and they watch movies like you know the same kind of movies you guys write stories about. Um, it's 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 worth the endeavor, and I'm not going to let you down. You give me enough money to make this happen. It's we're not going to let you down. Uh, also, uh, for network people, if you have shorts you want us to play on the network itself, uh, you got to send them to me, guys. you got to send me something. Send me something so I can put them up there. I've been doing it for a couple people, uh, doing it for, for some of our shows. But I'd like to get as many of our shows covered as possible in the shorts realm as well. So 
you know, it's all about getting seen, guys. Um, the next thing is, here in the near future, I'm going to have a few pieces of art that I'm going to be auctioning off toward the Roku, toward, toward that very money that we're talking about. We're going to have some Bill Moss art. I'm going to go through some of my own art. I'm going to throw some stuff up here. Um, we're going to have an actual art auction, whatever you want to call it, right here. And we're going to have some cool stuff. Like I said, there's going to be some Bill Moss stuff, <laughs> Greg Harm stuff. I might even throw a Jim O'Reilly piece up there. You never know. Right? Um, if you'd like to donate an art piece toward the Roku, if you don't have money, you want to throw a piece of art at the art auction. And promote said art auction. That'd be awesome. Um, you know, let people know. Be able to get a piece of your art over here on this auction on this date. Uh, this date will probably be, hell, I'm going to say directly after my surgery. As soon as I get home, feel like I can sit in the chair. So that gives people like a month to, to put a little money aside or put a piece of art aside, whatever you want to do. Uh, special thanks out to Bill Moss, because he said, Pops, I'll send you some art pieces. You can auction them off. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Doc, you did not add your stuff. You didn't add your YouTube, man. I'm sorry. I, I was working. I'm in a zone. I apologize. Let me... Uh... That was why I uh, had you come in as a guest. You could add your Twitter and YouTube as well. And then we'll be like at 11 different destinations. You know? 11. Get it out there. That goes for YouTube, Christian. If you got a, if you got a channel or YouTube or Facebook, whatever you want this broadcast to. Oh, let me go back out and come in as a guest. Shoot me the link. Mm, it's... <laughs> Hmm. He said, shoot me the link. I'm looking at it. It's right there in the madness reloaded. Uh, now it's there twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if I can do it. Hi, Lou. What is, up, that Lou? Lou? is that Lou Pons? Yes, that's our. That's yeah, our. it's not letting me pop. It, 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 it knows I'm an admin. How can you be an ad? Didn't we take away your admin? No. Could have spore took that away like No, you didn't ago. take away my privileges. <laughs> I, I thought that was the whole point of having you come. No, okay. Well, screw you. I took them now. <laughs> Go try again. All right. <laughs> I thought Let's I'd see. already taken Let's see if I can do it now without having to leave and come back. Yeah, you got to leave. What's up, Captain? Captain Infinity. Captain. Um, Y'all have to excuse me. I'm a little bit sleep deprived. My chest still hurts. Uh, powering through, you know. Here he comes again. Here he comes again. Jack. Uh, he's back. Mm -hmm. Oh, apocalypse. <laughs> now what do we do? Mm -hmm. Well, now <clears throat> my Twitter and my, uh, well, my Twitter is not a destination. We're already going to my YouTube, right? No, that's what I said. Add your oh, YouTube. Okay. All right. Hey, don't panic. I got this. Remember, this was the experiment today. Have you come in as a fan and add your extras? See how many places we can go to. Hey, I just wrote, wrote in the title, Dawstream, not Drawstream. Dawstream. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Q. Next time we're going to call it the dog what stream. What I do? We're just going to bring our dogs out. Uh, what I do? What I do? <laughs> you mad, bro? And there uh, it is. Uh, 
And yes, Doc, your Twitter should be a destination as well. I mean, it's, it's not in my list of options. So. Oh, it's not in your list? It's in my list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right, tell you what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, boys and girls. We're going to remove that one. I'm not doing this again. You were but watching on B Madness Comic. Now you've had to turn it all over to the Madness Comic. And there, Doc's Twitter's up in here now, too. Oh, look at that. That's how I do that shit, Doc. That's how I do it. Style. All right. So, here's Jake. What's up with Jake from State Farm? I mean... <laughs> State Farm is there. <laughs> yeah, good neighbor. Good morning, neighbor. Hey, ball. Hey, ball. That's what I said. Hey, ball. Oh, Arnold must be really hurting for money. He's got to go to State Farm and do commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Living in California, yo, ain't no joke. They gonna take all your money. <laughs> Oh, oh! You didn't hear what they what they're trying to do now. <laughs> uh, I just said California gonna take all your money. I'm pretty sure I probably heard it. <laughs> uh, how about how about this one? They want to do a, a yearly tax on all assets, including savings accounts. Well, of course they do yearly. They want to tax you yearly on the same money over and over and over again. Yeah, they want to make poor people, dude. That's the that's their job. And also, they are doing a um, exiting uh, tax when you if you move your business out and so like that they're charging you a tax when you move out of the of the right. state. What? Which, of course, I would tell them as I moved to Texas or Florida or Georgia, why don't you come and try to get it? I just tell them to eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You can try to come and get it, baby. Say it. Yeah. yeah. They're really trying stuff. Yeah, I'd just be like, this is a dick. Are you hungry? <laughs> Want some lunch? Because you could eat a Subway, dick. Eat. Subway, eat fresh. <laughs> you that motherfucker, but they going to eat it. <laughs> See, yeah, the government got me really good this year after they took oh, all the he got you, Doc. He got you, Doc. Yeah, what's a doll stream? What's thing? a doll stream? What's up, buddy? Yeah. You, you'll only see that on Doc's channel. You won't see that anywhere else. I corrected it. I corrected it. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's good to see you, fatty. Thinking about you. Get ready to fire up myself. All right, then. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and yes, yes, Gray Wolf. California is run by communists. There's no doubt. Half the country on each coast is run by communists. The shame, the shame part of that is that people don't even know what a communist is anymore. Well, they think it's something cool. More disturbed souls. Poor soul, I'm afraid the strain was more than he could bear. Uh -huh. Is Doc dying on screen? <laughs> I'm dying right now. ODF, you don't leave me alone. <laughs> that was Finity. These are your oh, friends. You troll your dumb ass <laughs> for doing that, dude. Stop trolling me. I'm old. <laughs> you, you, you left it open for your fans to troll your ass. Here we go. I did. I did. I, but it's, it's one of the many services I provide. Uh, you know how they say it. You deserve what you get. I don't ever want to. Reap what you daw. You know, speaking of, from the Christian perspective, ain't you glad you don't get what you actually deserve? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want what I deserve. Please, Lord, no. <laughs> yeah, I I I I hundred percent agree with that because ooh, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. And that ain't no lie. 
people be screaming, that's not fair. Do you really want fair? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure you want fair? So yeah, just everybody knows we'll be putting some art up here, up here on the on the damp work for sale. Um, also, for anybody who watches the show offs at three thirty with Dave and I, pretty much most most everything we show off is available. <coughs> if we show something, you guys see it, you like it. Um, yeah, all you got to do is hit us up and say, hey, man, what do you want for that? Uh, <laughs> I even got myself a USPS thermal laser printer, label printer thingy so that I can just have the post office pick shit up right here and send it out. All right? Uh, if you see something you want, say so. That's simple. I want to get the Roku up and running. I can rebuild it. Next year. <coughs> I might have something you want. I would appreciate it if you flip on over there, drop a little, uh, drop a little love on the GoFundMe so we can get the LLC so we can get to work. Uh, I think here in Michigan, LLC is four fifty. I'm looking somewhere else to get. I'm looking to get it somewhere else cheaper. I think that's stupid and ridiculous. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah, I know, Gray Wolf. I, he, that shit doesn't even deserve airtime. What what Biden's trying to do to this weekend. Now, granted, it won't always fall on Easter, but they had to have had the foresight to know that sometime it was going to, and it was stupid. And now they're, you know. No, it wasn't stupid. It was evil, and it was deliberate. Yeah, he deliberate. It was deliberately done because this is the first year they've done it. So they no, it's it been around for ten years, dude. Yeah, regardless. It's been around for 10 years. I'm just saying, they should have had the foresight to know that the end of March, beginning of April, Easter's going to land there at some point, dumbasses. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, they could have done it any other time of the year. Nobody would have blinked. It's stupid. Even the rooster agrees. He absolutely agreed. Besides that, I can't see him anyway. No matter what fucking day it is. I see a dude in a dress. Sorry, not sorry. Um, nobody wants to play my imaginary game that I'm I'm a rich um, TV uh, mogul, right? Nobody wants to play my game. That's what I'm saying. I identify as a billionaire. What's up? Right now, man, I'm a TV mogul. Even though the Roku ain't up, Roku ain't up yet. I already identify as that. Uh, I wouldn't be a TV mogul for anything right now. The way businesses are crumbling left and right. Yeah, well, I'm not worried about them because I don't do them. I do us. Independent. No Google overlords. None of that bullshit. Didn't say anything about Google. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and black that eye out, James. What do you think? I want, um, that, I want that heavy shadow under his hat. You know what? Black it, eye, black it out, but leave the ret retina. Or I'll just black it out and undo it if I don't like it. <laughs> either, either way, try, try the, the one with the retina first and then try it without the retina. Oh, I like it. Yeah, that, that that's good. Okay. I may as well go ahead and do both. 
What's up, nigga? You gonna black out both eyes? Yeah, I think so. You're gonna have to really do a little more shading on that on that um just a gleam from just a gleam from the eye, Doc. A gleam from both eyes. You can tell that his eyes are open. That's all. There, right? there we go. There we go. <clears throat> now we cook him a fire. Just give me a little gleam so I can tell his eyes are open. He is driving. A reflection from a street light. There's got to be something if his eyes are open, right? Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah. No, not necessarily. I'll I'll look at it. I'll try that. <laughs> contrast. Headlights, street lights. There's no contrast way. is contrast. And if it's daylight, then damn <clears> there's going to be a sunlight gleam from his eyes. Yeah, there's bright sunlight. That's why we're getting those hard shadows. Eyes reflect everything. Yep. Pop. I don't know if you know this, but I know how to arc. Mm -hmm. Right now he looks like a blind man. That's what I'm trying to yeah. get at you, dude. Doc, as a guy that drives with eyes, I feel offended by your art. Now we go back in with some line work. Hey, unambiguate me to show these other guys work. I've been up here for a minute. I'm waiting for a gleam in his eye. It may not happen. <laughs> ah, blind guy's driving. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Daredevil driving. anybody else, Lou, anybody wants to jump in here, drop in a link again, you're more than welcome. These guys had a really art. <sighs> oh, nice. See. Mm -hmm. see. Someone can show me. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Fatty. I don't own one either. Link is in the chat. Who's in the who? Chat. The link is in the chat. The who did what to what? The link is in the chat. <clears throat> oh. Uh, you Zelda game? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I also want to say thanks to uh, Chris Brown for cutting up a bunch of shorts from the Comic Artist Hour on Wednesday last week. Um, good stuff, man. The shorts are generating a few views. I like it. It's good stuff. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you. And my friend, my friend from DDO Online, from Madness Gaming, you guys know him from White Fire Comics, it's Doran Corkum. What's up, Doran? What? What? Hey, what? hey guys. How's it going? Up, Doran? Hey, Doran. What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, hey, man, I got a shirt a like that. To breathe. Really? Where would you yeah. get that from, Pops? I got a shirt Great just little like hell. that. <laughs> he he sends me a choice. He sends me two shirts. They're both badass. One says Ray Kell on it, right? And it's got the, the 
Japanese leather, whatever, you know, and looked cool as hell. I'm like, yeah, looks like an old rock and roll shirt, right, Doc? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then he says, or this one that says raise a little hell. And I'm like, how am I supposed to choose between those? Because as the promoter in me wants the Ray Kell shirt, obviously, but but the dude, the dude in me wants the raise a little hell shirt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what does Doran do? He sends me both. Yeah, I know. He sends me both. So I got one I can wear like con when I go to con and one I can wear like when I'm on shows, and one I can just wear when I feel like raising a little hell. Hell yeah, that's everybody's loving that shirt so far. It, it sold pretty good and then yeah, everybody who gets it seems to like it. I, it turned out really, really well. It's an um, awesome shirt, man. That's yeah. awesome. And the quality, it's its a breathable cotton on top. That's like top, top shirts, but ring, it, it's called, I think, um, ring spun cotton. So it breathes super well for a big guy. Like to me, to have a shirt that breathes is important, right? You know? oh. But yeah, it's a quality shirt on top of it. I, I got it from Sticker Mule. Um, Sticker Mule does them and they, they put discounts on shirts sometimes so you can get a good deal and make your own shirt if you want. It's, uh, it's then, amazing. The deals you get. And then there's. Oh, look at that. Oh, you've got it open. Nice. <laughs> yeah, oh, we haven't go, cracked we... it yet. But okay. we, have, we, we have not cracked it. I noticed there was no. Uh... That's because it's not the collector's edition. Wait till I mail you the hologram cover. Have I showed you the hologram cover? It's great. Dude, dude. Oh, look at this. Is that beautiful doc or what? Look at that. Oh man. Stop it, Dory. You're killing me. Wait till you see this. Wait till you see this, guys. You're killing me. Uh oh. You flip back. I'll see if I can figure this. I've never. Oh, look at that. All right, Eric. So this is the front. That's cool. But look at the, the text and everything adds depth to it. So when you have it in your hands, it's it's really beautiful. But check out the back now. All right. So now we have Derek Stevens on the front with my concept design and my graphic design, of course, laying it out and stuff. And then here we have George A. Castell. Castell? I can remember. It's a it's a Mexican name, I think. It's not Castella as in Seinfeld, but right. uh, yeah, but anyway, Castilla. Castillo. Okay, um, Castilla. Okay, so but that's his art on the back. You know, one of one hundred. Like this, this baby is absolutely gorgeous when you look at it and the light reflects off i've never seen a hologram cover this cool i've bought a couple i love specialty covers that is beautiful nice beautiful yeah. yeah i'm really impressed but inside the pages are dark so i've been working with comic springs trying to fix this so i can actually like this is a proof copy so i can actually get the official copies printed out it's it's been a back and forth so but, so you say you say you got me a proof copy is that what you said i have an extra proof copy do you like proof copies i'll send you one of the proof copies yeah. <laughs> you like specialty yeah. comics <laughs> i'll send you yes very much do i like proof copies um i actually right. like to get them just to proofread them darn oh no no this this when i when i mailed this out it was um the, the even the writing wasn't finished because i i thought i'd get ahead of the game and get it printed or, like to make sure it didn't fall behind in printing right. so i put it i purposely sent it so like and then so i could see the colors and stuff and everything that went wrong with the colors on the inside did so i'm glad i did but yeah that would so the be writing is exactly right inside of it so. that that one would be interesting to own too yes 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 <laughs> yep i collect Dorn, that kind of Dorn, stuff are you uh are you from Canada or Virginia? Canada. <laughs> okay. Up in Ottawa, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you were going to help me out. Thought so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now that Ray Kell's almost, I keep saying it's almost complete, but there's always something else to do. And the Forsaken Future, I thought I'd jump on because I'm trying to get some art ready for my little contour that I'm, that I'm starting in a couple months. So I think I can so, switch. So how right. do you draw? How do you draw, Doran? Do you draw digital? Do you draw traditional? I, so since being, you know, of the gray-haired variety, um, so there was no digital when I started, but I was very fortunate. So I always started pencil and paper, a um, lot of years doing that, but I always kept up with technology. And I just happened to work for Corel, which is a software company that creates Corel Painter, probably the first painting software I've ever seen anyways. And they had a partnership with Wacom. So when I worked for them for 14 years, I actually was professionally testing digital digital art. The actual art products working with the tablets and the tab. We worked closely with them. And Microsoft, 
So when the before tablets were tablets, I was testing tablets with pens, and they didn't come out with pens, and I was upset and I was complaining, and no one seemed to think that anyone would ever take off with having a pen on a tablet, um, in the sense of like an iPad and that. Right. And now look at it. You know what I mean? I was literally trying to spearhead that 20 years ago or 15 years ago, um, but no one would listen to me, unfortunately. But now you know, look at the iPad. Everybody like even. Is it Logitech that just released a new? They call it the crayon. That's for an iPad for uh, for oh, drawing. Yeah, it's brand spanking new. I just saw a commercial for it the other day. Um, but so what I so I started with Wacom. I had a Wacom tablet for years, and then Huion came. Uh, Huion, H U I O N came out, uh, and they're kind of a ripoff of Wacom. But at first their drivers suck, but now they're good. So now I own because they're so much cheaper. Like you know, you can buy a Wacom, which is your Cadillac, right? You're amazing over-the-top kind of well-produced professional digital art um, tablet, or you can get these Huons, which are, are, are you know, you're going to save yourself a couple thousand dollars or a thousand bucks, right? So I was skeptical, but now I've owned a Huon for two years, and I've been enjoying it. Um, so that's that's what I work. I, so I, I mix. I draw by hand, typically, and then I go to digital. I ink in digital or I edit in digital. You'll see, actually, how awkward my workflow is. Uh, if I could ever, I can never figure out how to, if I'm supposed to share my, like I'm on the camera right now. How do I flip it so I show my screen? Just share your screen if you have your. It's as simple up. as that. Just, okay, and it just goes into your little. Percent. Yeah. Okay. So. So yeah. Let me see. So, so you just oh you just flip me is what happens. I see. I never understood that. Uh, <laughs> just okay. All right, that makes more sense now. Uh, so I can share my screen game. and still be on the side. All right. <laughs> Look, we got a okay. noob, everybody. We got a noob in the game here. Yeah. Here in the yeah, I, hey, I'm a, high tech as can be, but I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I even have a, another camera that I, I'll have soon. I bought one of those Logitech. They have a new fancy for presenting. So you can look at stuff and it moves around and stuff. It's pretty cool. But anyway. so so this, is, what, this you, is the mess I created. Uh, so I got to tell you, you've, you've just said my, my whole process. I have yeah. I have an iPad Pro that I use. I have a Huin that I use uh, when I'm not using the iPad. I just ordered that Logitech uh, presentation. Oh, did you? The Korean order? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, nice. So I, I think it comes out in July. And... Um, yeah, it's so funny. I'm, I'm sitting here listening, like, yep, 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 yep. That's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very for, like I always try to keep up with that stuff, and uh, so that's cool to hear that someone else does the same because you never know, right? Yeah. Doc, how have you been adjusting to digital? So you've only been a couple weeks. Yeah. Oh, you um, <clears throat> I, I I think I approached it wisely, Dor, and I started off by just editing my hand drawn stuff to get a feel yeah. for the tools, and then I did my first whole page digital now okay. i'll say this um it's it's intuitive and it comes naturally but you slow down because you can really pay attention to the minutia you can yeah. get lost in those details and we're, and we're, the undo redo too yes <laughs> like, oh, it's no, more to control z and, uh, <laughs> and the and the flavors it allows you to create this is what i've always loved about the digital experience is i can drop by hand bring this in here and I might ink it one way, then I'll create another layer, ink it a different way if I want to try something different or try a different right. shape or exactly. something. Exactly. You know like, I mean? like, like, you know, I'm a painter originally. So right. me and the smudge tool are uh -huh. good friends. Nice. Very nice. Good so you'll see my art here. I've got this kind of awkward section here. where See, I drew it in pencils, and I liked what I did what I did in pencils, but I didn't like it. So I was trying to figure out the shapes once I went digital to create, right. to change, to alter everything, right? So I, um, a lot of the times, my pencils will not match the final piece. Right. Um, I'll play with it, edit it, try and fix some of the different things, you know? Very cool. Oh, 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 you threaten me, don't go. Okay. At least puppy agrees. <laughs> the puppy's going digital. Yeah. No, mine's not puppy no more. Mine's eleven years oh. old, so he's oh. getting senile. They're all, uh -oh. they're all puppies. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> eleven years old. God dang. Yeah, doing he's, well. he's starting to wind down. 
Corgis, corgis don't live, they live around 12 to 13, that's it. And he's starting to sleep a lot more, so. Right. Now, uh, I don't know, I like, I know dogs in general, but like a couple different breeds. What's a corgi? Is it a Have small you ever, dog? It sounds like it's a pretty ever, big one. No, did you ever see um, Cowboy Bebop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ein, the dog. Okay. That's a corgi. Nice. Okay. Cool. And that's that's what I have. In fact, like the dog on. from Queen Elizabeth II. No. Hold on. All right. Give me, give me, give me a second. I'll move my camera so you can see him. The that's Queen's it. dog. So there he is, right there. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. 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 You know what? I didn't know that was the name of them because my. Uh, my spouse is a Gillian's he is right there. dog was a corgi. Can you say okay. Hi? Can you say hi? I don't think dogs are people. Oh, what a cute boy. Big and a dog. There he is. Give me a treat and I'll hey. say hi. Give me a treat. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, his name is Ian. Grim Adam. <laughs> he is named after the dog from Cody Bump. So that's the nice. dog. That's my little guy. So Q, what do you think? Did King Charles keep the corgis or no? I can tell you where they're at. I know where they're at. Um the the two corgis are with um Fergie because Fergie the Queen Elizabeth all of her dogs passed away and Fergie gave her two and those two went back to her. So okay. they're back with her. I thought she had like six of them. No, they all died. Oh, okay. She had, you got her system. She had the, the world record of the line of her dogs came from the original female that she got back when she was a little girl, right? So that line went all the way up until like two years before she died. Her last dog passed away. So, I really like their corgis. Dang, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they get they got they're real popular now and they get expensive too. Capfinity says, by the way, Doc actually had a good idea, but don't tell him I said so. Oh. And don't tell him which what I'm referring to either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which one he was talking about either. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that I had an idea at, at all is a miracle. At least it's not as big as Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, well, Doc, oh. it's Easter. Miracles happen, right? right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Ha ha ha! Shut up. <laughs> poor doc. <laughs> or poor doc. Everybody fires a doc. <laughs> poor doc. I love the dude though. Man, is he a big target? Oh. Oh. I okay. <laughs> got to get him a new shirt that says "Doc" and have like a little target on it. <laughs> you leave me alone, sir. That's right. <laughs> leave me alone. Be multi alone. Yeah. Leave her alone. It's a Will you sign my book? <laughs> I I would caption this panel arrested for driving while blind. Uh, yeah, okay. Hey Pops, you can't see his anus either, but he can still fart. <laughs> Can he? Oh, well, how do we know? How do we know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Prove it. Prove it. Yeah. 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 Well, when you get the effect in the background there, poof. A little, you, little puff cloud behind his when you, when yeah, you get the book, put a little green cloud get, behind his ass. <laughs> get the book, give it a sniff. <laughs> oh. Oh, scratch and sniff comics, huh? Yeah. <laughs> New evolution. Cutting edge. <laughs> yeah. I forget what they did that with when we were like when I was a kid, they scratch and sniffed stickers. It was stickers, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, they get stickers that. in the store. <laughs> I remember. I don't know why. Teachers used to give them out in school, and everybody wanted the peanut butter one. Oh, there's I didn't even know there's a peanut butter one. All right, nice. I have no memory. <laughs> <of this thing. laughs> you scratch and sniff too many stickers, then if you have no. <laughs> No, those are the memory. side effects. <laughs> he was I might, I might have memories of stuff, but I'm not going to admit it. Uh -oh. 
didn't they have some in comic books too? No idea. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. The ads, like, didn't they have ads like, and like in magazines they had perfume and, and yeah, they had perfume like, ones, yeah. shave ads. Oh, really? And, yeah. They had all kinds of shit back in the day. Shit, that's what it was. Um, you know what's in my press right now is a Red Sonia 3D book. Three? Oh, it came with glasses? And a yeah, with the glass, you know, of course the glasses yeah. are in the press. I'm not trying to imprint them into the book, but, you know. Um, yeah. There was a little wrinkle by the staple, and I was like, "Really, y'all make a book like this? Fuck it up like that, <laughs> and then sell it?" Uh, you know, uh, right? That one should have never made it to the shelf. You know what I mean? Really dating myself. I remember when Jaws came out in 3D, and everybody was going to the theater. It was like the first time I think a 3D movie was. I remember that. Yeah, and it wasn't even a very good movie for 3D. No. I didn't it think was, they gave me the technology was there. Yeah. I remember, I the remember watching it going, this isn't 3D. The first 3D movie I remember was called Treasure of the Four Crowns or some shit. And uh, my dad took us to see it. So I know I was young. So that was way back in the day. And my, my dad got laughed at because in the movie, somebody walked into the frame. And my dad <laughs> said, hey, dude, sit down. <laughs> 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 the best 3D thing I saw was a Shrek short at Universal Studios and you were in a theater setting but like if there was move, like the, the platform you were on moved <laughs> you know the sight the sounds everything was amplified uh, at one point, uh, the character on the screen gets splashed with water, and so do you. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it was oh, like... 4D. Yeah, it was like... Uh, real it, it was kind of trippy, you know, but, but the actual 3D on the screen was better than anything I'd ever seen anywhere else. I mean, shit looked like it was coming at you. You had the, you had the instinct to dump it. You know? <laughs> well, I really wondered when they made the televisions 3D, how if that would work. But it died off pretty quick as a fad, didn't it? Yeah, it didn't last long. Hello, Nikki. Yeah. And Grim dude, I don't, I don't know Grim dude, but hi, Grim Adam. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the chat. We we well, call well, those guys well. over there the madness. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Be our guest. Be our guest. Unless you're watching on Stephen B's show, in which case it's the bull chat. Those guys over there are the bull chat. Um, I don't know what Doc calls his. Probably just the trolls. I don't know. No, patience. Just, his patience. It's the waiting room. It's the waiting. Room. Your chat is the waiting room. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a lot of people waiting for treatment, Doc. I'm you ever work at ER on a Friday night? <laughs> yeah. Only on a full moon. Believe me on that, I can actually say yes. Only, only on a full moon, Doc. You're going to wait. Oh. <laughs> and it'll be worth the wait, right? <laughs> that's right. Just don't forget to uh, bring your recorder and your, your notepad. And... Oh, notepad? What the heck? What's going on? Handy dandy notepad. Infinity. Shh, shh. Quit, quit giving Doc back his ideas, man. You know he's going to forget. <laughs> I forgot not what I had for breakfast. I forgot if I had breakfast. See? See? <clears throat> it's just the way it works. Boy, I didn't forget. I've been hangry for about a week now. No. I know that's right. <laughs> Did it involve jello? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go get a refill. I'll be right back. <laughs> I was just going to say he's setting a new record for not refilling his coffee. Um, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ethiopian coffee. <laughs> Elephant uh, poop coffee. <laughs> no, I think Ethiopian is Colombian. 
I couldn't believe that when I, I think that's a real thing, isn't it? That they like, they take the poop from animals and turn it into like coffee. Saw oh, something on that. Coffee luwak in oh, okay. Indonesia. Oh, yep. Okay. Please don't ruin coffee for me, man. Yeah, just yeah, let's stop on this, please. <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious. Most expensive coffee. Extra chocolatey. <laughs> coffee is the only thing that's getting me through these stupid energy shakes right now. So please, please. Now, how bad do things have to be that you turned around and put shit in coffee? Just to, okay, let's just stop on this, please. Or that you try it. You see, like the you know the elephant has eaten. Can we stop, please? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, comes up the other. Can we stop? Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's not discuss this matter. <laughs> It's best to grind. Do the rib. Come on. Please, don't <laughs> nobody start drawing you. Please, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. See? Yeah. You're just, you, you, you just heard it somewhere and you're repeating it. It didn't have to be from Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I will copyright claim everything. <laughs> All of it. All of it. <sighs> Everyone. So, uh, how about, was it last week? Yeah, last week, USS New Jersey gets underway for the first time since her mothballing <clears throat> or becoming a museum ship. Big ass battleship. It was on active duty when I was on active duty. That, that ought to tell you something. It's a museum. So I guess I should be in a museum. Anyway, on that same day, I got to watch a Falcon 9 launch. What a great day. Doc got all he, he stiff and shit. Hey, hey, mm. Doc. Yes. Did you get to see the movie Battleship? Yeah, I hated it. Oh, no. Well, no, no. there's a little interesting thing about that. The the When they, when they pulled out the Battleship, Mm. That actually went in. That actually did sail, and they were taking it in to get repairs. So they filmed while they were selling it. I don't know which one that would be. Um, which one? Which one did you use? I don't remember which one to use. Uh, I think the one that was most recently dry docked before New Jersey, and of course Texas. But Texas is a World War One. Dude, Texas. Oh God. <clears throat> Um, well, that, that thing is that thing's got holes the size of I mean that made I mean good God. Yeah, it's it's not in good shape. Um but I think that might have been either Wisconsin or Missouri. Oh uh, sure Missouri, which. that's what it was. It was Big Mo. Yeah, it was Mo. They were because they have they were going getting ready so they could put that as a museum and stuff. And they just decided, hey, since we're filming this movie, they're like, sure. <laughs> And the, the elderly guys that that were there, mm. they were not originally in the movie. They were they were there to help with the, the movement of the ship. So they just like, you want to be in the movie? Sure. Okay. Sure. You know, why not? Trying to remember that movie. Did they fight aliens or something in that yeah. movie? Yeah. Yeah. They pulled out the old battleship because it was analog and went and blew blew up the blew them up. Uh, mm. <clears throat> it's a fun it's a fun movie don't take it too seriously i think that's what you have yeah I, I have that attitude with a lot of movies like where people go oh that thing's terrible that's the worst movie ever i'll, I'll go watch it i'll, I'll even watch some, and rihanna's you know, in that movie i don't yeah you, she doesn't know. need to be in the movie that's the problem yeah i don't that was supposed to be the takeoff of her movie career look how far it went not very far <laughs> Now I will I will say this about the new Godzilla movie. It's a fun it's a fun Toho classic monster mash with great special effects. That's basically what it is, and it's very enjoyable. I heard that it's enjoyable, so it seems to be getting better reviews than some of the other ones they did in that series. Okay. Well, no, it's, this is actually probably next to King of the Monsters. It's probably the best one they did. Um, oh. They really, I mean, they spend like. I'd say 40, 45% of the movie is the monsters. Which it so should they, be. <laughs> they do a lot more with the monsters. I mean, it's not, don't, don't go in expecting minus one. I'll say that. <laughs> minus one is just, that movie is freaking amazing. Cool. Is the new one out of it? Yeah, the new one came out this weekend. 
I have one problem with that. The, the scene where Godzilla's running like a human being. No, no, no. If you watch it, he's not. He's he's leaning forward. He's not running like a human being. He's just fast. He's but there's a reason why uses, they did. You don't use his front legs, kind of like a. Well, no. What the, no? What it is? And I really. I'm, okay, so what happens is, it has to do with the other the other dinosaur, the one that they kept quiet, the the Shimu. Because of how powerful she is, um, Godzilla's got to go and basically absorb powers from other monsters. And he he fights some. Pretty, I mean, they're really good fights. And um, he just gets he gets just keeps getting jacked more and more and more. And it, it changes him as he gets more power. That's how he gets that that pink look, is because he gets he gets a lot of power from another monster. He oh. yeah yeah he takes he like he like. They give an odd to like eighty four where he's going after reactors. Oh yeah. So he does yeah. that. He does that, and then he goes and gets this. Goes after this other monster, and then he goes, and te- and Kong gets him to team up with him to go take on the Garkin and Shimu, and Shimu's pretty badass. You gotta have a good, good bad guy. Even when like when I make comics, I like the. To- Focus on the bad, the villain first, right? Because you can make your hero around the, a good villain, you know. Well, so see, that's nice I, to hear when was, they have something good. What I was taught when making um, like horror movies or villain movies or superhero movies is you spend twice as much time on your villain, and the more dastardly and awful and disgusting your villain is, the more heroic and honorable your hero will become. Correct. And I always want a logic to be with that villain too. Like they're ha- like, why are they doing it? I, that's one question I always want to answer. You know what I mean? What's made them the way they are? Because I find a lot of people don't do that. You know, and if you don't, then you don't know what you're. You know, you're not going to get those good good lines out of them as you're right. I find. You know. Oh, I, believe me, I write horror, so yeah, I, I put a lot of effort into my villains. Yeah, I really do. I never thought I'd be calling myself a writer. I was always an artist, but. I knew no, if I was ever going to make my comics, I got to get good at it, right? No, that's what happened with that's what happened with me. I was always the artist, and then I broke my hand, and for about five years, I couldn't draw because of nerve damage. Oh. And so uh, my mother passed away, and I got real depressed. And my doctor suggested I take up writing, and so I did. I I did, and I got pretty good. I got really good at it, and so. Um. I sent it to a couple friends of mine to read, and they were like, "Oh, you got to get this published." And they hooked me up with a publisher, and off I went. And my three books did extremely well. Yeah, I have to say, I didn't. I don't think I respected the writing as much as I did now. I, it's in high school and stuff. I was I was just terrible at English, honestly. Like uh, it, to look at it now and where I'm at, it's just a, like I never understood half the rules. <laughs> and then there's the comic rules as well. Like I have a um, a book in the back I think around here somewhere, but it's an amazing book on lettering. And I didn't realize for years I was reading comics wrong. Like when it does the dash, I didn't understand that's a pause when like someone's getting interrupted when you do a dash. Um, so I had no. <laughs> I went back and read some comics. Like, oh my god, this makes so much more sense now. I was always an art fan right so you know i loved ghost rider and all that but i wasn't reading it necessarily for for the you know the writing i was it was the art i was a text fan text area fan well for for me and i've always been able to tell a good story and i was always told that there's a difference between a writer and a storyteller Mm -hmm. and a storyteller can can use words to describe everything and keep you motivated and captivated Okay. And because I went to novels, I used my storytelling to tell my novel stories. So when I came back to <laughs> when I came back to comics when I started drawing, sure. it was it was to change the words into pictures and yeah. tell the story with the pictures so you could tell what was going on with minimum words. And that's the difference between the two. Yep. If that makes any sense, it, it does. It, well, at least it does to me to a degree. Like, um, because I could always, I could always just, I like, I'm big on world building and um, stuff like that. Like designing things, I can make character designs. I have like hundred character designs in the back from 
when I was a teenager and beyond in the, in the filing cabinet. I, I had the stories, but I didn't have them written the way they needed to be. You know, the craft of the word, um, I, I wasn't very good at that. I was never going to get good at that unless I invested time for sure. But I had a friend who, who does Sister Mercy that's very successful. He was always a writer. You know what I mean? So I learned a lot from him over probably the last decade uh, in reading his comics and uh, and just talking to him and having him actually proofread some of my comics. So I'm like, yeah, oh, I, and some of the other, you know, I used to use the same word over and over again. I think that's a fault that a lot of people have. It's the first thing he corrected that I used to do. Like, if you keep using the same word, like amazing, 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 and like you're first in two paragraphs of writing, you know, never do that. If you're going to use a word, don't. Re- there's always alternative words, alternative ways to say something. If you're going to say the same thing again or so- re- reflect on it, so that was one of the things that that he had taught me that was I found I found very helpful. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something that's really helpful. Thesaurus. Because my my spelling Thesaurus, sucks. Yes. Is oh, I yeah. use, I use grammar. Oh, big time. And I, big and time. I have yep. I have the, I have the pro- professional version. Yep. Oh, so no. it will flag. It will flag if you use the same word too many times. Yes. Yep. Yep. And you'll sit there and go, "Oh, I forgot about that." Okay, let me go in and change this up a little bit and change this up. Yeah. And I was uh, it- now I will still yeah. send. I will still send my stuff to my editor to look at, and let him go over it, and then he'll send it back to me saying, "Okay, this is you've got a problem here. You need to fix this. You need to do you know." And, and when he says fix something, he gives me the reasons why I need to fix it. Not nice. just that you need to fix it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the only way you can learn. And I think and anybody who's writing should be using Grammarly as an assistant. Even the free version of it was helpful. At least it lets you know there's something wrong. And then you can play with it to try and fix it. If you sit and think about it for a bit. But I ended up buying Grammarly as well. I, I, I don't think I could live without it doing the I comics. Think, I'll tell you what's funny. is when I start making my, uh, my city names and my countries and stuff, and I put it in Grammarly, it, it flags it like unknown words. Should we add this to your dictionary? Yes, we should. <clears throat> the other thing to do, boys, is read your writing out loud. Oh, oh yeah, I do it all the time. Yep. I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I slow myself and, right down. Yep. <laughs> yes, and uh, real good record, idea. Record it, record it, and play it back to yourself. Oh, you know, the thing about it is, is when <laughs> I'm writing, when I'm writing it, I actually say it to myself out loud while I'm writing it. Yeah. And then I'll go back in and read it. And then I'll go back in and read it out loud and I'll be like, okay, yeah. this kind of sounds yeah. stupid. If you, uh, yeah, it sounds if you awkward. It, if you record it and play it back, it's the same thing as a visual artist holding their painting or drawing up to a mirror. Yeah. You're, you're divorcing your own senses from your creative process. And now you're hearing or seeing the work fresh. Yeah. As a viewer. Interesting. Correct. Like a good neighbor. <laughs> I'm hey, <laughs> oh, we should do that. We just advertised for them. They owe us 50 bucks. They owe the madness 50 bucks. I mean, there's just things that people will always finish, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Heroes, <laughs> have was, have Heroes, Heroes have a half show? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure which one to use. I thought I'd be here. <laughs> After these messages, <laughs> we'll be right forward. Right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. <laughs> when he comes big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that he comes big. Oh, my, that's dated. <laughs> I remember that one. Hey, it's not dated. Stop it. I mean, it's fresh, fresh. <laughs> yes, Old fresh. fresh. Play it, Pop. Play it, Pop. <laughs> what are you trying to get me to play? What? Coffee shop intro. Jeez. Oh, it's oh, it's on the intro. Okay, it's not gonna be in here. You had Old me singing um, with a rebel yell earlier. I'm pretty sure that was on the intro video. I was walking up the stairs <laughs> singing yeah. rebel yell. Yeah, that's, like, hey, got that's me. Q's intro. That's Q's intro. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like these calm little moments before the storm. Money comes big, yeah, 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 it's not small, no, no, no. Kiss my entire, oh my darling, not three times on the ceiling if you want me. Your coffee, sir. Thanks, beautiful. You're welcome. This is a man's world. Ow. Ah. <laughs> 
Hey. God damn. That's my show. That gets me fired up when, when that intro plays. I'm ready to do a show when that happens. I'm, I'm trying to get ready for the uh, show-offs because, you know, I'm supposed to be ready for that when it goes off. Yeah. So today on the show-offs, just so everybody knows, I'm going to be showing off some uh, con programs and stuff like that. <laughs> stuff like that, uh, which I have a very nice collection of. Some of them autographed, a lot of autographs, shit like that. So I told Dave I had some special shit to show him. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Nice. Showing off con programs, maybe a few, maybe a few uh, autograph <coughs> comics, but mostly con programs and, and, <coughs> and cool stuff like that. So if you want, I found to a lot of my my badges the other day, and I started putting them in a pile, and so I'm gonna take a picture of that soon. Um, but that was cool. If you guys really want to see what's in Pop's collection, you're gonna to want to watch. The show offs today for sure. Nice. You're going to see some stuff you might not have never seen before. And I'm even going to save some of this for next week. I'm going to make two weeks out of this. But do you want a little sneak preview? Anybody want a little sneaky sneak preview? Why the hell not? Go ahead. A little sneak preview kind of show I'm going to be showing up today. I'm going to give you a <coughs> Review. Am I going to be jealous of all the stars that are at these events? Um, you're you're definitely going to dig this. Okay, this is from the Denver Comic Con. You can see there's autographs oh. all over. <laughs> nice. Um, nice. you've got Polito, Monty Moore, Marat Michaels, Yolanda Ruiz, Jason Jensen, Art Adams, Ryan Kincaid. <laughs> Josh um, Grimsley, Kevin Eastman um, with the turtle remark as well. You got Brian Polito nice. and Kevin Eastman both put remarks on this. Thing. Sweet. Oh, yeah. It's he was beautiful. up here in Ottawa, Eastman. And I'm, I kicked myself because there's only four people in line at one point. I could have just jumped right in line with them and got something done, and I did it. You got Art. You got Jason Jensen. Dude. They did a great job on that like that's a cool cover like that no, they no, did it all over the art like beautifully put yeah dude <laughs> that's badass uh and i got that from a friend of mine from from the sworn nation troy hudson love you troy um but yeah back in the beginning when i started doing this before before i was doing shows or any anything right um my collection was ash cans and con programs. I didn't my my comic book collection was very small at the time. I was more cons I, I was more interested in getting con programs from all over the country and possibly the world. And people started sending me con programs. So I have a solid, you know, two solid stacks of them behind me, as well as a nice stack of ash cans. Of all oh, different yeah. kinds, and that's that's what we're gonna be showing off today, 3:30 on the network with me and Texas Dave talking about ash cans programs. I don't know what Dave's gonna be showing off, but man, I can fill a show with this stuff, no problem. <clears throat> hey, hey Pops. Yeah. Did you ever get the tour books from the studios? No. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm about to go through some stuff I haven't looked at in a long time. I don't know what all I got here. Uh, <laughs> because yeah, back in the 90s, um, especially with the Image Studios, like Top Cow and Homage and Extreme, the, the whole studio would go on tour. Uh, stuff like this. <coughs> oh, that's very uh, nice. Oh, Comic Shop News? Yeah. I got it. Bill's going to love this. Nira X Ashcan. Ah, ah. Uh, hell. We got Batman Grendel Ashcan. 
Rafferty at. I do tons of these things. Man, Wrath of the Titans, uh, X Men. It was well, lots of cool shit, man. Uh, <coughs> previews from from the final night. Superman. I guess it's Justice League. I don't know. Uh, sneak preview from Total Eclipse. Just all kinds of cool shit, man. Even even got a cherry ash can, guy. <laughs> oh, cherry! I forgot about cherry. Uh, the wedding of Rick Jones, ash can. Miss some more vampy. Rick Jones got married. Lady Death and Evil Ernie. <coughs> from Ultraverse, Force Works. Just man, I got a ton of. Them, dude. Like I said, before I started collecting comics, I was I was more looking for this kind of stuff and programs and stuff. That was that was where my what fourth fifth collection. That's how it began was with that kind of stuff. And now it's just you know everything again, uh, and I do mean everything again. I have autographed bobbleheads and all kinds of shit now. <laughs> and I don't mean autographed Funkos. I mean actual autographed bobbleheads. Like I got a Zach Wild autographed bobblehead. I, I got a Chicago Cubs. The, the Not Chicago Cubs, but the South Bend Cubs, I guess they are. The, the double A team. I got their whole freaking team to sign one of their team bobbleheads. You know. Uh, a few years back, just for the hell of it, just because I like shit like that. I like owning shit like that. <laughs> what is up, guy from Red Bank? What is up, how dear? What's happening? What's happening? Happy Easter. You What's up, fellas? What's up, how dear? Happy Easter to everybody. Everybody. How dear? I got to give you a. Uh, I, I gotta give Hal Deer one of those. Uh, how come I can't give him a? Oh, that's because that's Doc's channel. Oh, Doc, I was, I'm trying to give people fucking wrenches on your channel, Doc. <laughs> Hal Deer should have one on my channel. I, do, I what? He should already have one on my channel. Hal Deer doesn't have one. Guy from Red Bank. I don't know who Guy from Red Bank is, but he doesn't have one. I don't know why I was watching on your channel, but I guess I was just checking in to drop a like because that's what we do. We support each other. Woo! That so many from, people watching, Doc. Guy from Red Bank's a cool dude, man. Yeah, guy from Red Bank? Are you a cool dude? Him is. Him is, Doc? Really? Him is. Him is. <laughs> Doc hit his drawing from us, guys. He won't show it no more. Oh, did I stop sharing? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, hold on. Embigadate. Hold on. Hold your water. And then went and then Doran went, Phew, I'm out of here. <laughs> Doran left. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he got the same technique as I have. I was gonna say, Q, someone's taking your uh, your shtick. <laughs> <laughs> My stick? What the fuck? <laughs> you know your your uh, ring of what? What is it? Um, uh, the internet is being a dog. No, no, dude, your stick is the hokey pokey. You're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like a whack a mole. Yeah, we need we do need a counter for him, Doc. Although today, <laughs> he's, been pretty good. today he's been pretty good though. He only left once. That's like, funny right there. Show. Okay, you are. To the seventy two people watching and the millions at home. I mean <laughs> Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Doc. Yeah. Did I hear correct that you, uh, are you going to be on that uh, that cockfight competition thing? I am. What? What? What did I just come back to? 
the, yeah, the you don't want to know. You don't, your art you, contest. You don't want to know, Dory. You really don't. Yeah. The roost. The rooster. Yeah, I'm. Contest. I'm. Uh, I have called out my own publisher, Anthony Romano. He he called out an easy mark. That's what Doc did. Oh. <laughs> oh, you called him out. I did. Like he can just beat up. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> Doc's like, I know I can squish Anthony. I'm calling Anthony out. <laughs> well, the, the the point in that is, yeah, I'll beat him because I'm better than he is. <clears throat> but uh, the point in that is, you know, the book's going to be freshly out at that point. He's the publisher. I'm the artist. So we'll gin up a little interest. And then that, that enables me to move on. <laughs> I get to move on to the next, to the next Your final expression. <laughs> <laughs> nice. In other words, I'm gonna kick that ace. I saw, I saw the first one. I, thought, I liked it. It was kind of brutal. I like it. Oh man, it was awesome. That's as much fun as I have had on a stream in forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The reason I disconnected is I went looking for my Kevin Eastman comic he brought to the Ottawa comic here, the the custom cover they did in that, and but couldn't find it. Oh, and oh well. At least he didn't didn't take the stick. Dick. He didn't steal your whole routine, did he? Only part of it. Was it me? I plead yeah. innocence. You got nothing on me. You can't nothing prove anything. Me, you can't <laughs> prove anything. <laughs> My lawyer said. <laughs> Do any of you illustrious gentlemen know who Frank Metzger is? I've heard the name. Oh. No. Yeah, Frank? Cap. I called out. I called out Anthony Romano. <laughs> he hasn't made his response video yet. But I'm already giving him shit. Okay, like, well, Frank, you can't hide from me, you skinny dope smoking longer. <laughs> Frank Metzger is a Dungeons and Dragons legend. Oh. And snap. I just found I, some, I just I just found a, a, a VIP badge that he signed. I'm not finding all kinds of cool stuff going through this, man. Jeez. I never screwed. thought of anybody sign a con badge. Never thought of that at all. I got Jim Suter signed my press pass to Hall of Heroes last year. Oh yeah, yeah. I met him as well. I felt bad actually. Oh, this is a great story. Well, make me look bad story. My friend obviously <laughs> knew who he was. I didn't know who he was. Right, oh, him and you transformed. I know. I know. Oh, shit. I, yeah, and I'm That's like, and, I, and I'm talking to him. It's the same. Um, the guy who did Game of Thrones, um, <laughs> George R. R. Martin. R. 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 Thank Martin. you. I, I met him. So I was at a book con 20 plus years ago and my spouse Gillian, she was a huge fan of Game of Thrones before anybody like of the books, right? Before it was popular, before any of this other stuff. So there was a private party for him at this book con with all these nerds, like all of us nerd type people. So I like yeah. going to cons. So I, I went. And he was sitting by himself, and everybody else was afraid to talk to him. And I'm like, I don't know who this dude is. I don't care. So I went out and started talking to him. So I myself, my, introduced myself as Doran, and he just happens to have Doran in his books. A play, I think it's a place called Doran. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I had an instant kind of, hello. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Believe it or not, stuff like that does happen. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know. And same as Shooter. I was at his table. Um, I was buying a really nice thing that's probably behind me somewhere. And the print was short, about two inches, and I collect 1117s. And there was something wrong with that print. And I was actually talking directly to him. And I was like, hey, can you fix this? And he had this look like, oh, okay. And I'm like, why is he such a, you know what I mean? It's a two inch print short. It's two inches short. I can't frame it and put it on my wall, right? You know what I mean? There's something, I didn't do this. I didn't cut it short. It's on your table. But anyways, I didn't have any type of conversation with him like that. But then I realized afterwards when my friend Doug told me, I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> Oops. I didn't realize I was talking to him like Oops, he was like indeed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh <laughs> crap. <laughs> One of the, the sad things, too, is James O'Barr was there, and nobody was talking to him. So I went up and talked to him. I couldn't believe nobody was there. Um, you know, the creator of The Crow and everything. Like, I, remember, I got him to sign things, and like I was like, he was going to sell me original art, and I still kicked myself in the butt for not taking it from him. He was offering me original art. And... I remember when he came, and the, the movie was fixing to come out, and they had a private meeting with him and signing with him at the hotel and so i had gotten a ticket and i'm sitting in there and i'm listening to him talk and i'm like going dude he was so depressed when i talked to him i mean i was like going oh, okay this is not good yeah he see, i mean he, he seems like somebody who's just naturally depressed yeah yeah i think you, if you take that and you look at the crow story you I mean, can kind really, of put the darkness into it. I think he talks about that and why he wrote The Crow. It like yeah. took him a decade or something like that to uh, to yeah. write it before he yeah. released it. But yeah. yeah, you're right. He comes off as a very kind of somber type yeah, he's person. Very, he's very somber. Yeah. And that's the funny thing is because people, when they come up and talk to me, because I write horror and I, 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 I kill people and stuff in my books, make it dark and everything like that. And I'm like this really happy guy. And they're like, you're nothing like we were expecting. I was like, what were you expecting? And they were like, going this kind of morbid looking dude. And I was like, oh, no, no, I ain't that. I just like, I just like writing really dark stuff. But wasn't the, wasn't the crow like based off of some tragedy in his life or inspired by it or something? I believe so. I, I thought it had something to do with the, some kind of war or something. Now I'm going back. I have, I read something on it years ago. So it's, well, it's been a while. If, if you really go to look at the crow, um, you can go all the way back, and there's another there's a there's another movie that was done um, like early '70s and stuff. And I hate to tell you this, but it's just like High Plains Drifter. If you have not seen High Plains Drifter with Clint Eastwood, it's basically the same thing. He's killed, and everything like that, and he comes back for revenge. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's, it's, James, it's, James you know, O'Barr wrote The Crow. It could be like a million other stories, but I don't know. I don't remember the, the story, but there was some some kind of tragedy did happen. Yeah, there was. It, it was. Yes, there is. It was his outlet oh, for a tragedy is. that, that oh, no. struck him. And and that's what. Ha and I'll be honest with you, that's what happened with me. Um, when I lost my mother. I went into depression, and that's when I came out with my my um, horror stuff. Mm. So uh, I so I got it. So there is oh, there, something just click. When you go into, the, and this, my, like I said, my doctor told me to get me out of my depression to write stuff, and mm. you know you just go into that, nice. and that's you, and that's what happens. You found a way to express it in a different way to get it out. Yeah. That's cool. I think creative people do that, right? I, I found out what inspired him. Uh, Obar wrote his first issue. As a way to cope with his personal tragedy, he went through when his fi uh, fiance was killed by a drunk driver. So that right. Was his, right yeah. That was his God inspiration. Damn. So, so I think that's like you know that that could have a lot to do with his his permanent like somberness and depression. I yeah. think, I don't. Yeah, and it could be just his personality, right? You just could be just a more you know, less energetic person. I mean, he's not young anymore when I saw him. Like, he's, you know, yeah. he's getting up there. No, I, saw, I saw him back in the 90s. That's what I'm saying. I saw him. Oh, yeah. No, I saw him 2010-ish. No, I saw, I, like I said, I saw him when The Crow had just come out. And, um, oh. I mean, no, it was fixed to come out. It hadn't been released yet. And the hype around the movie was just because of Brandon Lee was in it. Yeah. You know, that was the hype. And then when Brandon died, that was the that made the movie even more legendary. -ish, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's I mean, I'm not just trying to be mean, you know, morbid or anything. But the minute everybody heard that Brandon died in the movie, everybody was like, OK, I got to go see this movie. I got to, you know. Yeah. And everybody had high hopes for him, too. And again, him being the son of Bruce Lee. And like yeah. there was a I'd seen some of his movies. He was with Dolph Lundgren in a movie. I can't remember what it is, but I always remember um, a scene in it where they're both attached to bo like these these torture boards, and they're getting electrocuted. And Dolph Lundgren tells him to be tougher. He says, "You need to be tougher about this," or something like that. And then he's like, 
And he goes, okay. He goes, hey, aren't you supposed to baste this in between frying <laughs> or something like that? He says some kind well, of cooking joke. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> but the one he did, um, Rapid Fire, where he's where he's where he loses his dad and stuff, and he helps take out the mob. That movie was fantastic. That's probably one of the best martial arts movies ever made. Yeah, his career is definitely cut short. Yeah, he was he was scheduled to do several other movies and stuff or, uh, before he died. You know, he was scheduled and it just freak accident. Yep. Well, he was definitely. I mean, come on, they had live ammo on the set of a movie. He was definitely. Sick. Well, it's it wasn't live ammo. They got him. Okay, that's not what did it. Even with a blank, it has it has some kind of shrapnel, and the guy was too close when he fired it, and that's what got him. <clears throat> so it wasn't an actual live ammo round. I, I don't know how they figure that out with like, but that scene. Do you guys remember that scene in the crow? Yeah. Like he yeah. he's on the table and everybody's just blasting him. But at least it was a situation, hopefully, where one person didn't know they did it. You know no, I mean? where, it, where it happened is the scene oh, where um, he's coming out of the bathroom. And they had to reshoot it. That's why his face is blacked in. That's where huh. it happened. That's where it happened. Because they put is his that, head in. Is that still in the, the area where, in, where he's inside of the kind of the gangster gang place? No. Or is no. that in a different spot? It had to do with okay. the girl's mother. Yes, I was wondering. If, okay, yes. That's that's where it happened. And then he talks about, yeah, okay. He talks about like almost like a purity speech. He, is that the, the shot through the No, that wasn't through the hand. Yeah, that was a they, different they didn't show the actual shot. In a shot. while. They reshot it with. Um, right, the, that the, actor. It's darkened in. Yep. That was the first time I heard of CGI. That was the first time I'd ever heard of them using CGI in movies in that well, sense. Well, they, they really didn't use CGI in it. They just, dark, they just put somebody that looked a lot like him. And darkening yeah. the, the the camera the, the camera settings, so you really couldn't see him. So, cool movie. <laughs> it definitely was groundbreaking at the time. Like that's when it, to me, this whole comic industry was in trouble then in that era. And I, I, this this is a movie I'll probably get some judgment on. <laughs> literal judgment. I loved The Crow for sure, uh, but I also loved the first Judge Dredd movie. It's the only movie I ever went to the theater six times to watch. The problem with the first Judge Dredd movie, I don't know, I just loved it. Take, I don't know. No, is he keeps taking his helmet off. If he'd have kept right. his helmet on, it would have been really good. It would have been a really good movie. But he kept taking his helmet off. And I was, was like, like Rob Schneider. Like I liked the comedian as well at the time. Yeah, Rob Schneider um, was fantastic in it. Yeah. And then of course the the other one, the other Dredd movie they made was just perfect. I didn't like that one as much. The new one with Carl Urban. Yeah, that one was perfect. That was that was actually as close you can get to the comic book as you could get. Okay, so I wasn't a comic book, believe it or not, I wasn't a comic book fan back then. So I this was all fresh. The Crow was fresh to me. I ne well, I was a comic book fan earlier in my life, but never too much indie stuff. So I didn't know too much. I'd heard of Judge Dredd. I'd never heard of The Crow. So when they came out in the movie theater, that's how I got introduced. Literally, pretty well, other than you know. Um, I'm trying to, the only indie comics I remember was like Lady Death, Ernie. Um, well, see, Lady Lady Death and she came out the same year. She, yeah, I remember collecting some she and stuff too. I remember, like in Wizard. Back then, myself and Kelsey Shannon were working together. This is our first gig. I was penciling, he was inking my stuff. I've got like two pages of that artwork still. I am and um, we sat across from Stephen Hughes and Brian Polito and everybody from Chaos at the time. And what happened was there was a big fight going to happen that night. So they had rented out this abandoned church, put tarps up all over the windows and everything like that because it was a dry city, brought in kegs of beer and everything like that. And we got, myself and Kelsey Shannon got dragged over to it, had a wonderful time. And Brian and Stephen just gave us all this advice about, you know, self-publishing and doing your own thing and everything like that. It was basically the same stuff he gave um, Billy Tucci when he was fixing to do She. And, um, man, they were, uh, man, Stephen Hughes, oh, my God, I could talk about him. May he rest in peace. I could talk about him forever. I mean, such a great guy. Fantastic guy. 
I remember they used to do articles. I think it was Lady Death inside of Wizard and stuff like that. And they would be talking about how many hours those guys, like if you were an indie person, like, like you were living making comics. Like they showed, well, they didn't show them. They had pictures of it and they talked about time, you know, time lapses and stuff. It was pretty cool to see, but that's when I realized, man, it's hard to create an indie comic. Well, you, I'll, tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the picture that really uh, got me. Ben Edlam had said uh, in Wizard, when he was working on the tick, the book, and the animated show, he said, "I've worked so hard that now when the toilet flushes, I think it says I love you." No, oh. oh, uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the one that really, the two that really got me, was when I found out about the guys that created Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, when they drew it in the garage, and I saw pictures of mm-hmm. the garage, and I was like, going, "Oh God." And then when Todd McFarlane left Marvel and went to start doing Spawn, and his studio was his garage. And I was like, these guys are doing it in their garage. Yeah. And believe it or not, Kelsey and I were drawing upstairs in his bedroom in his mom's house at the time. That's where we were drawing. I mean... This this notion of the bullpen that we had seen pictures of in Marvel and stuff, mm. that we never got to do that. You know, it was it was right. all this other stuff we did. Yeah, and it's then a lot of work. and then ninety seven yeah, came, now. and that was it. Yeah, the the old man speech of you know you don't realize how hard it was without digital and back then you couldn't communicate right so you're you're literally living in a bubble of um, yeah, there was no cell phone. Oh, sweet and, Lord, have mercy. My my long distance bill was more than my mortgage payment. Right. Oh, dude, I had, oh, yeah. oh my long distance bill was nuts. Oh my God. Yeah. And I remember we got we got to do San Diego. San Diego. First time ever to do San Diego. Oh my God. So we throw everything in the back of my little bitty Volkswagen Cabriolet. We had so many boxes I had to drive all the way to California from Texas with the top down. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. I mean, we awesome. made it. We mm-hmm. set up. We had a great time. We loaded back up and came back home. <laughs> I mean, and I mean, you're driving across the. The weirdest thing is driving a convertible with a whole lot of boxes in the back of your car, driving across the desert at night. Oh shit! <laughs> 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 and I'm sitting there going like, "Oh, please, please let my little cabriolet make it home." <laughs> and it did. It made it all the way to California and all the way back. Make it. Yeah, I've so, had a couple of cars like that too. And then I and had then a five hundred dollar car at one point. No, no, this wasn't a five hundred dollar. This is this 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 Cabriolet is actually really in good shape. I paid five grand for oh, the car, so it was actually oh, okay. you know I bought it I bought it pretty pretty new. So, um, then it was like this is like ninety. Four, yeah, ninety four. This is the this is where all the work came and everything like that. I ended up at Denny's with Rob Liefeld and everybody in the kitchen sink from Extreme Studios. Oh, cool. And the the incident that took place and uh, mayhem that took place is legendary. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw all I saw the whole thing live. Nice. Yeah, there's points in time, you know. That whole breakout for Image, as a comic fan, I remember being really disappointed that they couldn't hit deadlines, especially Waterworks. Oh, I was sitting there waiting for Waterworks forever. You mean Wetworks? Wet, sorry, Wetworks, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, Wetworks. the thing about Wetworks, and Amazing I, artist. I, I feel real sorry for Willis Patasio about this. He's designing Wetworks. He's getting it ready to, to, to really go, and then his wife decides to divorce him and take all assets. Oh. So what he ends up Damn. doing, he sells the rights to Wetworks to Jim Lee. Okay. I hate to Jim break Lee. up this awesome show, guys, but I got another one to do here in a little bit. And it's about that time. So we're going to go around the room. Everybody tell everybody where they can be found. I'm going to play a couple of our favorite sponsors ads, and we're going to be out of here just kind of like that. What you showing me, Doc? What? What? 
Uh, I'm a little tardy sharing screen. I'm sorry. All right. What did we see? Shelby, tell me. Do it. Uh, it, it it's a page. Okay. There's page. All right. Um. Hit <laughs> yeah, it, it back up. I'll show it. This uh, is a <coughs> Porsche Vance being a distraction to the guys that are guarding Morelli's beach house so that our hero can slip in the door and do bad things to the bad guys. There you go. That's how we do it. Doran, tell everybody where they can find you, brother. They can find me at whitefirecomics.com. Get your digital copies there. Try something different. I'm trying to get a slogan going. <laughs> <laughs> working on it. It's a work in progress. Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> if you don't know nothing about White Fire Comics, look, I like darn stuff. It's good. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out. Um, if you like what you see, then by all means, give it a shot. You know. Just like that. Whitefirecomics.com, people. Um, Zappo, Zappo, Zappo. Tell everybody where they can find you, brother. He's on mute. Yep, he's muted. Of course he's muted. Hey, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, right, yeah, just head over to my uh, my website's right there under my name. Head over there. Uh, you can subscribe for free. Get latest updates on the upcoming campaign. And... Um, all my links are over there for, you know, Facebook, Twitter, so on. There you go. There you go. Foresight11.com. Go check it out. Go check it out. James. Mr. James. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do this real quick. We can get this over here so you can actually see what I did. Right, so. God dang. Nice. Here's the Lovely. Goblin Queen. Uh, this will be up on my website for sale if you are interested in buying it um, with some other artwork that I'm doing from the draw streams. So they will all be up on the website for sale. So just go over to the website, www.thevonsteins.com, and contact me, and we'll see what we can do. Cool, cool, cool. Doc! I am the doctor. You can find me on YouTube. I am the only Doc Blaylock on YouTube for now. <clears throat> you can find me on the Twixter at Doc Blaylock 8404. I'm the writer and artist behind Pariah Blood and Mud and the Pariah Saga and behind the forthcoming, launching on April the 19th, A Damn Dirty Thing. A Damn Dirty Thing. That's the way it is, people. That's the way it is. Uh, Q, tell everybody where they can find you, bro. Yo. In the Morrison Formation. <laughs> Just kidding. You can always find me here in the Madness Comic Network on YouTube. And he froze on the Roku. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, so close. Perfect. Robbery. We've been robbed. He didn't stick the landing, boys and girls. Somebody He's got the horns of the devil in his hand, though. The <laughs> Easter Judge down. gives him a 3.6. God, man, we just can't get it right today, can we? You just can't, can't get it right today. Um, I'm going to play sponsor ads. I love you guys. Check us out in about 40 minutes or so. Hey, I'm gonna be yeah. Before you, before you do, can we keep the draw stream going on my channel? I don't care. No, I mean, can you technologically do that? Can I turn everything off and keep you going? I don't know. I, 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 I never do. mind. Never mind. Let me play some ads and we'll see what happens. Mm. Mm. Got to play the ads, mm. then we'll see what happens. All, All right. right. Here we go. Peace out, everybody. Love you guys. The future. The final frontier. It has never been so uncertain as now. AI, VR, haptic wear, nanotechnology, mass destruction with a remote click. Now we are finally seeing the true potential and dangers of an ever-connected and overly policed hyper-technological world. Have we finally become the architect of our own demise?
Is there still hope? Welcome to the future. Welcome to Punk Droid. Flip City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at the. I mean, I remember when you guys, it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But, damn, they have just, I mean, they're just really stepping it up and on. Look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett. Genuinely cutting. Um but also funny and obviously just chaotic and, and very fun. I love Flip City. It has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium. How do you end this thing? How do you put the where? There was the brakes on this bus. I forgot. Jazz how to hands. Drive. Jazz hands. Are Have a good night.